Welcome to Florida Men on Florida Man with Greg, Wayne, Josh, and Cameron, the podcast where Floridians discuss the legends, lore, and crazy stories that always seem to take place in Florida. Florida. Beautiful. What's going on? Episode 124. Wow. Glad to be here, boys. 124. Yeah. Listen, on Monday, we dropped a brand new series called The Social. Yes. It's a heater. It is uh, bonus content that airs randomly throughout the year where we interview some of Florida's finest people, yeah. uh, people who are game changers, really creative right. folk, really amazing folk, yep. really beautiful folk, people who make Florida famous. And if right. you're in Florida and you haven't been interviewed for it, then you're just... Yeah, <laughs> come on. So we've only interviewed three. So there's okay. like there's like 20... We have a lot of... Nine uh, million. Yeah, we have a lot of time it? in front of us. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in line. But we're going to get to all of you guys eventually. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> check, check out the one uh, that we did on Monday with Cliff. Oh, Cliff my God. Is Cliff Brown's a legend. Awesome guy. Yeah, he was a lot of fun. Yeah, super He's honored great. to sit with him. And uh, he said his favorite part of the show was Cameron's headlines. Those mm. are my favorite. Is it really? Yeah. I want to hear. Am I wrong or does everybody say it's their favorite part of the show? No one everybody. says that but Cliff. So. Bokeh headlines. Bokeh headlines. Okay. All right. Let's talk about a Florida woman. Uh, from yes. Auburndale, Florida. No, God, no. Okay. sounds beautiful. Very close to Lakeland. Where yeah. Very we're close. From. Yeah. Uh, so, thirty-four-year-old Shantaria. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, decided that she was interested in purchase purchasing a new car, so she contacted the Chevy Center in Winter Haven, Come Florida. On. And they were talking over line, and you know she was interested in a twenty twenty one. Overline online. Josh is making fun of me right now. <laughs> I just never heard it. It sounds over like over the a internet. Thing. She was talking on the phone over the internet. Over email. <laughs> Voip. Voice right. over yeah. internet. Anyways, uh, so she was interested in a 2021 Chevy Equinox. And so uh, she goes to the Chevy Center to okay. test drive it. Well, due to COVID yeah. uh, restrictions, um, test drives are, you know, the uh, salesperson does not get in the car with you anymore. Hello. Alrighty. <laughs> well, uh, Shantaria took that to heart and really took advantage of that because she took a test drive and never came back. Okay. Okay. Well, never came back. Uh, right. So after two hours of the test nope. drive, which I think was supposed to be more like 10 minutes, right? Um, they decided to contact the uh, law enforcement mm -hmm. and they use that handy dandy thing called OnStar that nobody uses. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, uh, they tracked her down to Lakeland. Shout out okay. to OnStar. OnStar. Yeah. Saving lives, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, but uh, I've had that button in my car for like 10 years, and I, I don't You've even know never what touched it, does. it. Never touched it. It it will literally deliver you food. I do. What? Just touch it. Yeah. I do on long it's like drives. DoorDash? Yep. If I want somebody to talk to, I just press the, right. the OnStar button. Nobody will answer your calls. He does, Eric. But here's the thing <laughs> uh, when we did a test drive, the guy sat in the like the trunk portion of the SUV. The hatchback. Just, just tucked. Okay. Yeah, his yeah. knees to chest. Right. That's what they're and supposed to do. I was in the very front and he just yeah, he so he, he kept tabs. Yeah. But at the Chevy Center, they don't have that. They don't no. sit in there. Well, if you've heard of Winter Haven, they are known for the Chevy Center. Right. Right. It's the world center of Chevrolet. Exactly. Right. Yeah. And so uh they, they tracked her down to uh Lakeland um and ended up bringing the car back. She was arrested for grand theft. But hmm. honestly, you know, if you find a car that doesn't have OnStar, go that for a it. Bad, baby. I'm that sorry, bad I'm not trying to defend her. Oh, but okay. what if she was really just testing out the car? It's Those a big, it's yeah. a big purchase, right? Well, she did take the dealership tags off of there it, it is. Okay. and had all her stuff in it. There you well, go. Well, you really want to personalize it I when you make chance, it your own. Right? You know, yeah. you want to put your baby seat. She in had it. already put one of those saying. little tree air fresheners up in Mop the too far. Uh, yeah, block her straight row. to jail. Yeah, straight to jail. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So our next headline: We have a Florida man. Yeah. Okay, arrested for stealing uh, a vehicle as well. Oh, come good. on. Uh, from a hospital, specifically an ambulance. Okay. Oh, okay. And so, uh, anyways, this ambulance was stolen right out of the ambulance bay. Okay. Uh, the, uh, I don't know, the paramedics, I guess, is what they're Was called. Was he making a run, like, to get a, an injured party? Uh, uh, he might have been doing Was the he right like thing. an off-duty uh, EMT? Right. Last. Well, right. the, the on-duty EMTs were upstairs delivering a patient, and so there was nobody in the ambulance. Nobody was around. I don't okay. know. I guess they left the keys in it, um, yeah. but he took off, and uh, luckily, 
Okay. He actually got stuck in the mud near a river. I don't know what he was doing near a river. Sounds I mean, like there's he's a rescuing picture a of a drowning it. person. Well, there's right. a, well, that's true. Boating yep. accident, maybe. Thank you. Uh, the, there's a picture of the ambulance, and it literally looks like he's driving into a river. Oh, I mean, yeah. I don't know yep. what his plan no, he's was. He's pointed here. down. Um, yeah. But uh, he was easily caught. And, uh, you know, he was charged he with the sirens ambulance on. aren't supposed to be by rivers. <clears throat> right. No, no, yeah. no. The, the, you don't want to take them off road. No. Uh, that's the thing, though. I feel like if you're going to steal a car, you would want to steal something less uh, conspicuous. Ob- boxy. Yeah, that's well, I think more so is if you're wanting to steal a car, you steal yeah. a car with the keys in it. Oh. So he went by opportunity. He went for ease. Yeah. So ambulances are not like the scooters on the side of the road. You can't just take one. Yeah. They're I think I think you, as long as you just drop them off somewhere else yeah. uh, and you don't take them home with you. Cool. I think so you can okay. take an ambulance from one hospital to another. Right. Gotcha. Yeah, yep. I think that's okay. Cool. Good law. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so our next uh, Florida man was driving a motorcycle, Ooh, weaving in and out of traffic, nice. uh, going over 100 miles an hour. Okay, very, being very reckless, uh, reckless and dangerous. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, law enforcement pulled him over. You know, why are you driving over? Why are you being so hour? reckless? Why are you being so reckless? <laughs> Man, this is gonna be a long night. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, and basically, he said, "It's okay. I'm trained to drive a motorcycle like this." Come well, on. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry for bothering you. Then right. you're you're free to go. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's Please go say. on your way. Can I see and, your uh, Can I see your fast driver license? Right. It's a It's an extra start. So it, in Florida, you get a uh, motorcycle endorsement. So it's it. a normal yeah. license, but there's a little thing that says motorcycles. Also, I think his just says. Oh, you're being for real? Yeah. Oh, okay. I have a. Motor- I thought you're yeah. making a joke. He no, no, no. Would have one. No, but I think his says. Very, very fast motorcycle. Uh, I think he gets a gold star. There's the joke. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> superstar. <laughs> he gets the superstar. Wait, so what was the verdict? He went to jail? Oh, he went to jail. Oh, okay. Straight yeah. to jail. Straight yeah. to jail. All right. So our next one, uh, man, this is interesting. So Florida man from okay. Tampa. Yeah. He's an attorney. Yes. But they call him a gimmick attorney. Okay. Okay. All right. So if you're not aware of what a gimmick is, specifically oh. a gimmick with wrestling, Okay, and so if we're now talking, I'm lost because I had that the first. I was like, oh, like three card Monty, right? And then that guy like takes your five bucks, and you're like, I'm gonna sue you, right? Oh, so a gimmick okay. is a term for a wrestler's in ring persona and anything that defines their character. Okay, nice. So that's okay. a gimmick. Now the gimmick attorney in uh, Tampa, his name yeah. is Michael Dawkins. Come on, um, his job, his specialty mm-hmm. is helping wrestlers trademark their gimmicks okay come on and so he literally will help them not only trademark their name yeah yeah, okay uh he can also trademark what their mask looks like what (laughs) colors they're using like catchphrases yeah and so he found out that this was you know this is a uh very common thing with big wrestlers right Right. Yeah. It's all, it is like their brand and it's common for big time wrestlers that are in big circuits and you know I don't know anything about wrestling um but uh you know Famous wrestlers. It's it's isn't like nobody WrestleMania can copy. like coming to Tampa or something. I yeah, think this week, you know, because you don't want somebody like maybe like in a lesser league or something like copying your colors or your yeah. brand. Exactly. Well, that's I'm the Chuck whole the thing accountant and is, I wrestle. He's right. he's yeah. standing up for these people in the smaller. Uh, you know, they call them promotions, but basically he was he was seeing that you know these lesser known wrestlers had no protection, and so nice. people would be able to take what they were doing oh. and even below them. Well, he was saying, you know, there's no reason for you not to be able to protect That's true. your identity That's true. and right. your brand. So he w- he's basically hunt, uh, helped hundreds of wrestlers uh, basically protect their gimmick like it. and their identity and will help trademark their entire brand as a wrestler. So even if they get out of the sport, it's still there. It's they still can there. always go back to it. Maybe he does this. He does this free of charge. That's so cool. Uh, I don't know. Is that? I don't think I said that. Okay. No, I I read it online and services that are means completely it's fact. free. <laughs> Look okay. him up. He'll what? be standing outside of WrestleMania this weekend. Should we like contact him just in case like some wrestlers want to be like podcasters uh, from Florida? We're like, no, that's right. taken. In all seriousness, though, I it is uh it is true that people in like uh, like big artists. Yeah. will constantly take stuff from smaller artists in any genre. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, it, it makes sense where, like, someone in the yeah. the, the bigger federation... Well, yeah, so Shakira took My Ships Don't Lie... There you go. ...from uh, Cousteau. <laughs> right. Yeah. 
I remember that. If you had had this guy lie. to protect you, right. yeah, that's true. Business manager Phil, <laughs> yep, he said it's he true. Says true. <laughs> oh man, hips yeah. don't lie. It's the Shakira song. I really do like. I, I like that story. Me I just too. like knowing that our wrestlers in Florida are protected. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Yep. All right. So our next Florida man headline: We have a Florida man with a shovel. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Story over. Gets into a gunfight. Nice. <laughs> All right. So uh, the good thing is uh, the man with the shovel blocked the bullets. He blocks the bullets. No. Ricochets them. No, no. But he does win this gunfight. So basically this guy was getting into his uh, into his vehicle yep. outside of a bar. Uh, he, he gets into the, the truck and somebody immediately comes up to his door uh, and doesn't say anything. Shoots at him five times. What the crap? Okay. Okay. And so Hold on. Let's it, hear. Let's he, hear he's actually hit three times yeah gets out of the truck uh and the guy the the guy that you know shot yeah. at him at that point says give me all that you got well you well, just shot me three times right yeah. and i feel like that's a you know pretty inconsiderate thing to do at least ask first yeah the right? whole point yep. y- if you if you already shot me you have no more threat left <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah well he may have more than five bullets yeah he oh, may that's have more. True. yeah uh, so anyways a, uh, rotating a witness sees this happen okay it comes up with a shovel Nice. Smacks Stonk. the guy with the gun. Well, then the guy that got shot three times picks up the shovel. Come on. And goes to beat the guy. Combo bloody. breaker. Yep. And Teamwork. so, and, you know, in this yeah. case, you know, Love normally it. you don't take like a knife to a gunfight. This guy takes a shovel. Uh, it really pays off yeah. for him. And we need to get honestly. a hold of this lawyer to patent that shovel man. Shovel man. Shovel man. <laughs> it's not a gimmick, though. It's a lifestyle. Come on. <laughs> okay. Cameron freaking home. <laughs> Welcome to another edition of Florida Man on Florida Man fans on Florida Man on Florida Man. That's F-M-O-F-M-F-O-F-M-O-F-M if you're keeping track and it's good to be back, guys. How's it going? Like really butter. Hey. Sounds like you've been practicing. Come yeah, on, man. I'm smooth. I'm just trying to be a professional over here and try not to screw up. I love <laughs> it, baby. <laughs> Sounds right, so good. So listen, if you don't know who I am, I'm Jason Fields. I'm your community manager. And this is a segment where we take some of the questions you've submitted for the host and they take a minute to answer them on the show. So we know the show is nothing without the listeners. And this is where your ideas or questions are heard and answered. So if you guys are ready, let's get into it. Come on, yeah. Let's do it. Sounds good. Let's go. The first question is from Rachel right down the road in Tampa, Florida. She says, you've mentioned your church camp experiences before, but do you have any additional camp stories to share? Yeah. Mm. So many, actually. We could probably talk about church camp stories for a bit. Yeah. Um, In a Patreon episode, probably. (laughs) Yeah, we should do that, actually. Uh, No, I I remember one time, um, I was like 11 or so. Uh, we went to camp uh, up in South Carolina, and we kind of got into this like kind of camp war where it was like eighth graders versus sixth graders, that kind of stuff. And there was a sixth grade boy. I'm not going to say his name, mm. but I think he listens, so he knows who he is. Um, uh, and he uh, he peed in the oh, shoes okay. wow. of the camp counselors. Okay. Um, he thought that was funny. And then to kind of set it off, he um, put a firecracker, an M80. Oh, to and, literally and set it off. Yeah, and one of the shoes blew him up. And he wanted to be misted with his own urine. Right. Does, uh, does the point. urine make it stronger? Or is that the like bomb? a... Yeah. I think that the is, bomb makes the urine stronger. Okay. Right. True. Yep. And uh, so now he's on a list um, <laughs> the rest of his life. No, right. but can't his dad had to drive anymore. from Florida... Right, no, his dad had to drive from Florida to pick him up, and all I could think about was Jeez. like, man, I, that would be the whooping of a lifetime. I would be grounded still to this day if I did that. Where did he drive to? He drove from Florida to South Carolina. You know, oh, I think by that time, the dad anger has leveled out and calmed down. You have a long time to think about yeah, it. Yeah, where he's like, almost, my son, I've done something wrong here. I, I see what you're saying. Yeah. So it benefited him being so far I away. I think so. But yeah, yeah that was my uh, camp story. We set off bombs and peed on things. I uh, Mine's a little bit more positive this time. Usually, you know, I've, I've ate goldfish. Um, go on. And, uh, that's a past episode. You can go back and listen <laughs> okay. to it. Um, but uh, I have one that's, a little bit more encouraging. So one night at uh, church camp, okay, mm. you know, the service, we're probably three days into this. Yeah. I've heard. You've sp- heard the message. I've heard the spiel. Uh, I'm ready. You know what this is all about. <laughs> I know what they're going to say. So I decided to duck out, but <laughs> I, I, I'm like, hey, Tara, I'm yeah. like, 
let's go. Let's, Who's let's Tara? get out of here. Tara's my wife. Okay. Okay. And I said, let's get out of here. So we want uh we went out to the dock on the lake. Okay. At church camp? At church camp. Everybody's inside. Everybody's inside. Two kids sneak out. Yeah, we're probably smooching on the dock. And cool. uh eventually I'm like, so you want to make this official? You want to be my girlfriend? And uh. that was the first day that we uh, officially started dating. And then like, I don't know. Six- that day was uh November 15th. <laughs> we got married on November 15th. Like you guilted six your wife years the year later though. into yeah, dating oh, okay. you and kissing you at church camp. Guilted? How did I guilt? Mm. Well, you said Jesus or me. You pick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Who do you want in your heart right now? <laughs> 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 so I guess the next one, we're going to go out west to Oklahoma. And before we get started, Josh, oh hit me gosh. with three facts about Oklahoma that people might not know. Honestly, I was hoping when you said Oklahoma, I was like, dang, I know so much about it. Well, let's hear it, smart boy. Uh, so Oklahoma was originally spelled wrong. Okay. What? <laughs> what? It's not really known. Like if you Wikipedia. Like the gonna, first person that spelled it, spelled it wrong? That's no, impossible. the second person. Oh, okay. okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Mr. Oklahoma's like, this is Oklahoma. <laughs> okay. The second person's like. That doesn't. Let me spell it this way. Okay, then, so it's changed. Yeah, the week. Even if you like type it in Google, Google will correct you. Oh no way! <laughs> yep, and that's <laughs> that just your crazy. natural intuition right. saying something's wrong. So it's spelled right now. True. Bingo. Gotcha. Uh, Oklahoma is also known uh, as the state with the most number of caves. Okay, but the least number of basins, gorges, and canyons. Okay, that's, that's crazy that that's you know less that. Interesting. Honestly. Well, that's on the Wikipedia. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just know that from memorizing each state's Wikipedia. Okay, okay. okay. for this segment. Right. Well, for life, actually. Right. Okay. You want to get ahead. Just yeah. facts. Just facts. Yeah. Uh, third, and probably my favorite, right. um, is Tyra Banks. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> okay. It was one of her first job, Quizno subs. Was it? Uh, and she went to home office for training to get that panini <laughs> press down, right? In Oklahoma? Yeah. Okay. So they changed the home base now. Now, what, did you International find model. Out? Uh, Tyra Banks worked well, at now, Quiznos yeah. in Oklahoma. You, it's it's a it, they call it the Quiznos to supermodel pipeline. Okay, right. And most most supermodels start. Did you Quiznos. find this out because you were on Oklahoma's Wikipedia or because you moderate the Tyra Banks website? Well, I wouldn't call it a website. It's more of a forum. It's right. a forum. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Fan site. So <laughs> no, I love how before the show starts, Josh is like, "Hey, don't don't let anybody know about how close Tyra right and I actually are." And then you spend every segment well talking about Tyra Banks because how- I want to let everybody know how close Tyra and I are. I mean, we've never met. She's never met me personally. But <laughs> right? She knows of my. <laughs> she knows your effort on the forum. Legal documents. I got gotcha. you. True. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So let's get to that question from Oklahoma. This oh, is from yeah. a guy <laughs> named Doyle out there in Tulsa. <laughs> okay. Cool. I didn't realize we had got it, the Hopefully, question. it's about Tyra Banks. Thank I you, Doyle. <laughs> so he says, I just heard the episode the other day with Cameron's spot-on impersonation of the Dark Knight. So who right. is the best Batman Here we go. and why? Nice. The best Great Batman Great question. Okay. Uh, I'll go. So I personally yep. have got to say Christian Bale. Yeah. Best Batman. You watch The Dark Knight. You know that you were watching one of the best movies ever made. Yeah. Okay, it's a masterpiece. Uh, Christian Bale kills it. Okay, hit Bruce Wayne. Yep. I mean, come on. Suave. 100%. Okay. Handsome. Just great. Uh, and then you get Batman. I'm Batman. Yeah, no, that was a really good impression just then, too. Yeah. But uh, I recall the episode where he did that uh, on Spot On. But I agree. Uh, it's Christian Bale. He is Batman. Oh, whoops. Yeah, Sorry. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, me, it's going to be actually someone who's a professional actor by trade. Okay. Uh, wow. Michael okay. Keaton, he played four <laughs> okay. personalities in multiplicity and got dumber each personality. So, you, oh, so you're so you judging Michael Keaton's Batman ability on Off the lesser movie. known film Mo- Multiplicity. Is it though? I think yes. to most folks. Yeah. I think it's equally known. Is it? People go so. the Michael Keaton from Multiplicity <laughs> as equally as they go the Michael Keaton from Batman. Right. Oh, okay, right. Uh, so, uh, Jason, though, what what about you, man? What was your uh, what would be your answer to that favorite Batman? Well, I think the short answer, I, I would agree with you guys and say Christian Bale is definitely my long favorite. answer. Michael Keaton. <laughs> I like Keaton too. I think the only Amen. ones I don't like, I don't like Clooney and. Um, Val Kilmer wasn't very good either, but yeah, that was a good question, Doyle. 
Thanks, Doyle. Oklahoma, spell it right. We appreciate it. <clears throat> so we go back to the East Coast. This is from Hannah up there in West Virginia. And she Come says, on. does Josh keep a spare linen mm. shirt in his trunk in case of emergency cult gatherings? Well, it's Florida. Great I question. Think, uh, Florida law states you have to be ready right. for hot weather, hot for humid cults. weather, and right. linen right. is a must. True. Right. Uh, also, um, you guys know the fruitarian notebook I carry around with me right. in my front pocket states I need to have reserve linen clothing just in case citrus spills right. on my chest. You called it a notebook. Uh, normally, you call it a holy book. Well, I didn't want to just... Okay. <laughs> I, can't, I only say holy book to other fruitarians. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So Josh is referring to, and, and Hannah uh, from West Virginia is referring to, um, uh, an icebreaker Josh did where he talked about the, the time that he accidentally got involved with a cult. Hannah, yeah. let me know if you're interested in um, joining. <laughs> You can't recruit on the podcast. I can't. We've no. talk, we've you guys know this. my Instagram. It's uh All right, so the next one is from across the pond, an international friend over in Avignon, France. I hope I'm getting that right, but this is from our friend Julian. He says, as an international listener, has it sank in yet that your Florida stories are reaching listeners all over the world? That's a great question. Not at all. Easily. Yeah. Uh, so so <laughs> Josh is answers. like Josh is like on episode two we're going global baby right. we gotta go global take it worldwide I I, sh- I believe episode three I gave a shout out to Antarctica you did <laughs> I think I think honestly we're surprised anybody listens still um, blown Not away me. by the amount of support yeah. uh, that happens uh, you know I when people from Florida reach out. I'm like, oh, dang, you've heard about the show. And then somebody, Julian, reaches out from France, and I'm like, what in the world? Yeah. Like, I literally keep us on loop just to hear my friends. <laughs> just to, so you can hear from us? Yeah. You call us in the bathtub. Right. Well, just that's call private us. time. We're that's, here. Yeah. No, yeah. I like. I don't like hearing what you have to say spontaneously. I see oh, what you're okay. saying. I like knowing what you're going to say. <laughs> I uh, No, I, I think that's an awesome question, and yeah. we're honored. Short answer, we are honored. Yeah, um, we, we yeah. People thank listen. all of our listeners. Yeah, you know, for sure. Mm, but everywhere. from France, hey, we love it. Love it. So cool. Thanks a lot, Julian. We appreciate you reaching out. So this last question, we're going to bring it right back to the state of Florida. This is down in Naples, Uh-oh. and this is from Elizabeth. She says, I always love the episodes around mm-hmm. Halloween and the spooky vibe that comes with them. I know we're a long way from October, Do you? but do you guys have big plans for this year's Halloween episodes? Uh, we do, but I'm not, I think it's too early to talk about it. Yeah. Um, Knowing that uh, one of the three co-hosts said we do, and me myself as a third of the co-host yeah. uh having no idea that that right. is, is even in Let's the air. Let's just say it's going to be bigger than last year. We so. have spooky plans for Josh, right. uh but we won't be rolling that out until July. Or so. Hey, fellas. Hello, Joshua. Hey, Josh. So I got a email. Okay. Mm. Um, uh, stop sending letters, apparently. Right. People are catching up. Well, you got your electronic computer, age. So. Got my laptop now. Yeah. Uh, they said, guys, um, you know what's kind of fading out is the era of the good salesperson. Mm. Right. Right, right, right. Uh, and they said, I used to be a good salesperson. I could sell shrimp. Uh, to a shrimp farmer. Right, in the right. 50s. <laughs> That's yeah. a thing. When people still sold things. Right, yeah. when they farmed shrimp. Right. Yeah. yeah. They were better shrimp back then. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Bigger big, ones. Big. Prawns. Oh, yeah. Big or boys. camarones, yeah. as they call them. Uh, and they go, you guys ever been <laughs> ever been sold something by a good salesperson? Oh, yeah. That you didn't intend to buy. Oh. Uh, oh, there's a caveat. Yeah, because okay. this person, they were actually a mattress salesperson. Right. Someone came in for a pillow, and they're like, sold them a king, California king, and they I didn't even have saying. room for it yeah. in their car. No, I have been. I'm guilty of that. Um, when my wife and I first bought our house uh, that we're in now, um, I was home, and someone came and knocked on the door. And the way that my house is situated is if you knock on my back door, I know you know me. Right. Like, um, that's the door we use often. Yep. Knock on the front door. I know you're a politician. 
or a threat or, or a threat. Yeah. yeah. Uh, one Most of the, threats one of the same. on the front door. Uh, or a salesperson. Right. Ooh. And so someone knocks on the door. I know immediately, wow, threat. And so I go out front. <laughs> guns and, a blazing. Uh, guns yeah. a blazing, shovel in hand. And um, it's this uh, little, little lady. She's in this like hatchback car. And um, she was like, she says this to me, who handles the education in your home? Oh, and I Pardon? go, I'm like, come That's a very again? serious question. Yeah. yeah. She's like, who, who handles the education in your home? And what she was is she was a traveling book salesman. Uh, These are around? I know. Well, she was selling books. Um, and she like, she hands me this sheet of paper and she's like, show me the prices and comparisons and all this different stuff. And, and immediately I'm like, I don't need this. Like, right. I don't want to buy books. Yeah. I don't right. read books. Well, especially since the smallest package was like 300 bucks. And I'm like, oh, I yeah. don't. Sounds like good yeah. books. Though. Yeah, I don't I'm want any sold. of this. Right. So I'm sitting there and I'm feeling bad. And, uh, but then it dawns on me. I'm just like, you know, these are all children's books. They were all like educational stuff for children. Nice. And uh, so I, the, the quickest lie I could think of yep. was I don't have any kids. Um, so I don't have any need for this. Is yeah, that, it was would that go a lie wasted in my time? home. At the time, it was not a lie. I had children. Uh oh. Um, so um, I, I'm sorry. It was a lie. I had children. Oh. And and, and <laughs> okay. uh, the story gets deep. <laughs> yeah. And so she, and I, I could tell that she's like she feels bad, and she goes, "Well, look, I'm traveling from overseas, and the way I pay my rent is by selling these books. Yeah. You know." And she yeah. goes, "So if you could help me, um, does anybody in your neighborhood have kids that, that would be interested in this?" Oh, nice. And, Point me to the closest. House with kids. And I said. said to her, no one in our neighborhood has children. Oh, what? <laughs> wow. And what's even worse is above uh, the privacy fence of yes. my neighbor's house yep. is a giant play place. Like a giant, like what you would mm. see children play in. Yeah. Well, so and she was playground. nearsighted. And I see her obviously. look at it and mm -hmm. look back at me. And I said. You just closed the door at that point. I said, oh, people like slides too. Well, <laughs> okay. So you're really not <laughs> quick on the draw. Like slides. Yeah, and that's then I true. felt bad, and I bought the cheapest package she had because well, I think she knew that I was lying to her, and I was right. like, "I feel guilty." She caught you at that point. Help me pay your rent. So now right. I've got a stack of kids' books that no one's ever read. No, I think uh, you you read those to me on the phone when I'm in the bubble bath. That book, the Berenstains. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you did that to I me do. too. Yeah. What? Well, how, what were you sold, Cameron? Man, uh, so when the first time I went to New York. Okay, so uh, fancy this. Guy. We went. We were told, "Hey, listen. There's a lot of street vendors. There's a lot of people that are going to try to sell you stuff. Jerky. Right? That and, is and every you corner. can walk around. In, yeah, whew, the jerky's overflowing up there. <laughs> uh, you, you can walk around any corner, and somebody's got like purses or hats. Or back then, it was DVDs. Come on, spread out. And, but they spread them out on blankets. Okay. okay. Right. And so, which I was confused about. I'm like, why don't you get a little table or something like that? Well, all of a sudden, at one point, I hear somebody say, there's a cop coming. And uh, so they literally take this whole blanket. Everything yeah. stays on the blanket so okay. they can just scoop it real quick. That's oh, brilliant. And wow. throw it on their back and That's walk away. That's brilliant. Yeah. So they just walk off. Well, you know, so I was wary of this, right? Right. But I was still interested. Yeah, because you want to see the newest, hottest I want to see the goods and right. at a good price. Right. <laughs> okay. And so I was talking to this guy. That's why you, you went know, to New York, right? Exactly. I want to see the goods. Uh, and so somebody stopped me. You know, I think they were talking about a DVD. Um, I think it was uh, super bad. Uh, I don't remember. But okay. anyways. That sounds right. Uh, so, uh, you know, I'm not really interested. Unrated, but they're like though. Unrated version. <laughs> uh, they, uh, they said, well, if you're not interested in this stuff. I've got more stuff back in the back. And I'm like, back in the back. Back in the back of your sheet? Yeah, I thought we were just <laughs> staying on the street. And yeah. so, no, he, he took us into a basement Whoa. underground. Okay, it was super sketchy. Blu-ray? But there was some cool stuff down there. HD okay, DVD. like Nikes. Cocaine? Like super cool yeah. Nikes. Yep. Uh, I'm sure they were legit and uh, sourced and bought at a good, you know, uh, reasonable place. Shrimp Rep ceviche? Shrimp ceviche was not there that day, okay. um, but uh, I, I was talked into buying some new shoes uh, oh my in an gosh. underground basement. But the guy was so passionate if about what he was doing. You can't trust a shoe salesman in an underground basement in New York City. You know what I love? Well, that's the thing is, you like, can't trust anybody. I felt like I was being treated VIP. Okay, Do I saw though? the stuff sitting on a blanket on yeah. a dirty street. But when you invite me into maybe a home, you're, you're, yeah. <laughs> your into your basement right. and say, "Listen, okay. here's." where my passion really is. Here's I make homemade Nikes. The Nikes that are close to my heart that yeah. should be close to your heart. And I said, amen. A basement in New York is a nice place. Right. And I've always said that. But I will nope. say this. If you're on vacation visiting New York, 
You're from Florida. Right? Yeah. So a stranger. Oh, they can tell you're from Florida. A stranger says to you, come into my basement. Yeah. And let me sell you something. And you said yes. Well, just to be clear, I was 14. Well, I okay, think there I was is. on a school trip. The yeah. transaction is I have to buy something uh, in order for me to leave safely. Well, right. yeah. And I thought. That's the other thought, too. That's I'm never going to leave this basement. <laughs> I want to support his passion. Yeah. Also, I want to live. Yeah. He's like, he <laughs> said that. That's my passion. <laughs> do you want to ever see your parents again? <laughs> right. Oh, I do. Okay. Yeah, my chaperone Reeboks. was very concerned. Here's some Reeboks. Point. Yeah. Huh. Uh, well, guys, I also have purchased something. Nice. Right, uh, from a very good salesman. Okay. Uh, Is this another church camp story? No. I didn't purchase Jesus at the church camp. Okay. Uh, actually, I was a salesman at the time, and that's how you know. Okay, yeah, y- you've you've met someone that's kind of one up and you. If you, do, if do a good salesperson, salesman, no good salesman. That, there you go. Yeah, they fish them out. Okay, and they're right. like, I can out sales you right no. now. No, right. it's competition at that yeah. point. So they're like selling clothes back and forth off their body. That's how a good salesman does it. Oh, right. Uh, so at this time, I'm um, I'm doing door to door. This is one of the more embarrassing door to doors. Here we go. Yeah, and uh, it's phenomenal the amount of door to door jobs you've had. Well, there's a lot in the paper at the time. That's how you used to find jobs. Right. Well, yeah, yeah well, you're, classified. You sold doors, I think, at one point in time. That's, this is uh, the one I've been trying to hide. Front porches. The, well, yeah, the siding and front porches was right. a package. Um, this was door to door doors. Okay. What? So door to door doors selling doors. Yeah. Well, luckily <laughs> you you know. What they need by just like driving by and you're like a door. Yeah, that's a piece of crap door. Yeah. Right. And oh, the company was true. called like you can actually see right into there their home. You, yeah. what you're trying to okay. And the company was called Door to Door Doors. Yeah, it was called D two D D. That's what was embroidered on our shirt. D two D D. Right. Right. And so uh like I had two days there. It didn't last long. No, okay. Uh, I wonder why. Training was day one. Right. Okay. They show you how to use a Polaroid camera. Right. What? Uh, yeah. What well, year was, was this? <laughs> it was a long time ago. <laughs> Polaroids were really heavy too. Uh, they give you a film, and yeah. Polaroid film was not cheap. No, right. A lot uh, of overhead in this job. T- yeah, yeah. And I didn't have to buy it, luckily. But they're like, you only get this first stack. Right. Uh, after oh, okay. that, you buy your own film. I gotcha. So uh, I go to my neighborhood. And I'm like, that's a crappy door. Yeah. Right. Let me I'm, sell them a better door. Let me sell them a better door. Yeah. And of course, like during training, it was all like, trust me, just, you know, you say these sayings, you know, uh, the doors are, or the eyes are the window to the soul. Amen. How important is the door to the soul? Come on. Oh, that's yeah. great. Yeah. Come on. I'd probably close the door on you. But yeah. I mean, well, a good, lot though. of people that's did. That's actually what Cameron said to Tara at the church camp. That what is what I said. Yeah. Uh, the door to your soul. Something, something about that. I remember yeah. that. Let me in your door. To your soul. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to cut you out there. So uh, I, I go up to this crappy door and I knock and the guy comes and I give him the old door sayings. Right. And I'm like, sir, you're going to love what I got here. So... <laughs> During this door to door interaction, yeah, uh, what we had was a it was like a three by f- it was like a three ring binder, three okay. inches thick uh, Patreon. If you can see my hands, right, yeah, um, and it had doors in it. Okay, pictures of doors. No, these were like um, these were model wood. doors. Yeah, Do you, okay. So the if you, you had, had model someone, doors in a binder, someone, if you had someone on the hook, as yeah. they like to say, and you right. hand them a miniature door. No, uh, you say. Uh, give me a minute. Well, let me show you what this door would look like on your house. Come on. You back up 15 paces. Okay. A pace is like three feet. Yeah. Right? So I, I'm 45 like, feet. No. Maybe. Okay. <laughs> so, you back up 45 feet. Yeah. yeah. And I take the door out that the guy's interested in. Right. Yeah. Which, oddly enough, because I'm a killer sales guy, uh-huh. uh, was a speakeasy door. No. Wrought iron. Little hatch. Okay, Very cool. nice. Who's there? Yeah. Very Actually, nice. You have your yeah. privacy, but you can also, yeah, yeah. you can get some face time the threat. in there. Right. Assess right. the threat, as right. Wayne says. Right. Yeah. You're at the front door. You're about to be a victim. Come you on. Assess the threat. <laughs> I sh- yes. <laughs> so I back up 45 feet, 15 paces. Right. right. Uh, and I hold the speakeasy door up uh, in front of his door. It's a it's a whole perspective thing. It's geometry, trigonometry. I don't know. Right. Take the picture. It looks like 
that front door and my big giant hand. So you're doing a photography trick. House. Yeah. You're doing a photography trick to put a door, a fake door. Yep. That's brilliant. To cover mm-hmm. it. That's brilliant. That is Pol- brilliant. Polaroid comes out, you give it a shake, and you yeah. go, fella, fella, look this at is, this. In real time, this is what it would look oh, like. Oh, yeah. They, actually, the hardest part of the sale was that uh, 60 to 90 second cool down. All the, the Polaroid. Because yeah. it's like, you got, you're going to love seeing this. We call that the development <laughs> as phase. As you're shaking the it. The development phase. Right. Yeah. It's all about eye contact at that right. phase. Right. Do you so, speak during that time? Yeah, or you, you got shake? to. Yeah. You're, like, I, you're hyping it up. You're like, you're not going to believe that. Was now, <laughs> now, what was the commission like on this for you? 50% a door. So you sell a door, you get 50% of that door's yeah, value? I, I sell a $1,000 door. Five hundred thousand dollar door. Come on, a lot. Doors are expensive, man. Yeah, Here's I learned thing, all though. about them. Wood, steel, fiberglass, composite, aluminum, security. <laughs> I mean, keep, you want me to keep going? Clear glass, frosted, stained, rain glass, ornate. Well, this guy had baby. A, I can go all day. A productive forty eight hours as a door to door to door salesman. <laughs> I, I do yes. like the hustle, and I like you know how you did it. But as a homeowner, yeah, uh, and you guys could probably speak to this as well. I've never thought about. Man, I wonder what a new door. That's exactly well, that's because like, no one's ever knocked on your door selling doors. With that's a fake true. door in hand. <laughs> yeah, a folder full of doors. I never and, knew what I was missing. And then when he <laughs> says, give me a second, and he walks 45 feet away. <laughs> you think I'm leaving. You think he's done. You're hoping. And that, and that you're like, oh, crap, he's leaving with my door. He's upset. Polaroid comes out. Bingo. Eek. If they, they were like really on the hook, I would be like, you want to see a magic trick? I'm about to make you disappear. And then I would say, stand in your doorway. And I would hold the door in front oh, of them. Man. And I'm like, where'd you go? But you only did this one day, right? Well, yeah. <laughs> now, I'm not hearing it. Yeah, I was about to say, I'm hearing no downside. Your pitch is brilliant. Yeah, I want to do it one day. What happened? Well, so I get in this guy's house. Okay, so Once now you you're get in. in the door oh, with in. the doors. I'm like, I'm yeah. gold, baby. I'm about, yeah, to right. make, I'm about to make 500. Your family at this point. Yeah. So uh, he sits me down. He's like, hey, man, you like energy drinks? <laughs> you guys what? know. Yeah. So I'm like, I do like energy drinks. I'm 19. Yeah. Right. Walking door to door to door. Right. And I love energy drinks. Yeah. And he here hands me this, like, uh, I forget what it's called, like Verde or Vera or something. That sounds right. Yeah. And I'm like, uh, this tastes good. And he's like, bet you never heard of them, have you? Huh. Like, uh oh. <laughs> and he's like, uh, the company's actually new to Florida. <laughs> And they're no, they're looking for salespeople. I'm sorry, you're selling door to door doors, and you yeah. accidentally get hooked into a sales pitch from a guy with a with an indie soda company. Not well, even to buy energy drinks to actually quit your job and work for him. Well, the energy drink was good. Oh, Verve, it was Verve, oh. and uh, and I'm like, oh, I mean, I usually drink Buku and Red Bull. Okay. Right, that's true. Stop reading my story, Cameron. <laughs> And uh, so he's like, yeah, no, we're actually new in Florida. Right. And we they need salespeople. He's like, why do you think I'm home today? I made 3K last why week. Why do you think I entertained your door-to-door doors pitch? Right. Bingo. I got cash to burn. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, if this guy can afford a $1,000 door, I want to be making that money. Come That's on. true. So the dude hands me a free six-pack, and I quit my job. And you and did you start working for him? Or the next just- day. And then about, I, at about 1030, I was like, this is all... This is bunk. <laughs> yeah, so this isn't good. Yeah. I was like, I got to go to the bathroom, and I left in my car. But I love- So you lost two jobs. Yeah, I lost two in jobs. In two days. <laughs> I don't think the door-to-door door sales is going to work out. I love this idea, though, of you moving careers based on someone selling you. So, well, like, it was multi-level marketing, so his right, sales so was like- One to the next. On it, yeah. He I love was it. good. He was better than me. He didn't buy a door either. Daniel Chappie James Jr. was born February the 11th, 1920 in Pensacola, Florida. Ooh. I love a good Chappie story. What do you think his nickname was? Chappie. What do you think he went by? Chappie. Okay, I thought James. We're going to call him Daniel. Daniel was the son of Daniel James Sr. Yeah. and Lily James. Uh, his father worked for the Pensacola Gas Company, uh, which in the 1920s was actually a really good gig. Right. Um, his mother was actually a teacher who had a very interesting career. Um, Lily taught public school yeah. uh, for a while, but she felt like African-American children weren't given a fair shake. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. So when she had her son, 
Um, she wanted to make sure he had an amazing education. And so she started a school for her son and the other families in the black community. Uh, it was a private school called uh, Lily A. James School. And it Wait, did, did she not know about the book sales lady? That was not traveling back then. Around? That okay. hadn't come around yet. Yeah. Uh, but uh, her school did really, really well. Um, she actually ran that school until she was 82 years old. Okay. Wow. Um, and that school increased graduation rates in the community by 75%. Uh, mm. So a lot of students left her private school, went on to do amazing things. So Daniel James Jr. Um, had really hardworking, amazing parents. Yeah, right. um, sounds he really, yeah. awesome. Yeah, really benefited from this. Um, he credits his folks for giving him a leg up in life, specifically his mother, um, for overseeing his education and really investing in him. And so after high school, there was this kind of like mystery on like where he was going to go to college. Like, yeah. what am I going to do with my life? Um, and he didn't really have a ton of ideas of what he like wanted to do career wise. Okay. But he decided one week that he wanted to drive to Alabama mm -hmm. and tour the campus of Tuskegee University. Okay. Nice. Okay. I bet he's like, I'm not getting into education. Right. Yeah. Sure. I'm going to go there. Uh, no, uh, he basically was like, this is, this sounds like a good step for me. I'm going to go uh, tour the campus, see what happens. And so a little background on Tuskegee University. It's this mm -hmm. phenomenal historic school uh, built by Booker T. Washington, uh, home of some really successful people, including okay. George Washington Carver. Um, and that's located in Alabama. Uh, so uh, after touring the grounds, Daniel Chappie James knew this is where I'm 